Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And now for my second guest tonight, I have with me the International Carpe Diem Foundation. Representing them is Ethan Knight, who is the founder and chairman of the board. Ethan Knight, welcome to the show. Thank you. And Maxwell Clark, a student with the International Carpe Diem Foundation, or ICDF, as I'm sure you <laughs> occasionally call it. Yep. Welcome. Nice to have you here tonight. So, Ethan, let me start with you, if I could. Um, tell me a little bit about the foundation, why it was founded, how long it's been going on, a little bit of the history, if you could. Sure. I'll try and give you the short version. Okay. <laughs> um, in, in short, um, Carpe Diem Education is a for-profit educational institution. We take um, mostly gap year students, which is uh, sort of that time between high school and college. And what they do is they go overseas typically, and they'll do uh, typically a three-month service learning focused semester. Mm -hmm. Um, after probably about 10 years of doing that work, I realized that um, mostly it was students who were from a fairly privileged background that were able to take advantage of that, just by virtue of the travel and expenses. Yeah, it's not cheap. Exactly, exactly. And so um, I got tired of seeing the, you know, the, just be the province of the well-to-do, and so I um, decided to build a foundation so that we could work with students from lower income backgrounds to avail themselves of this opportunity. And so. The foundation came into being about um, four years ago. For the first two years, it was just um, working with sending two students overseas a year. And then after that, we said, you know what, we can do better. And so we went into hiatus this last year to reorganize. And this year, now it's a, it's a full year-long program. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Now, I, I first found out about you because I was a, a follower or a fan, I should say, of uh, Pangea Project. And, and you recently kind of absorbed them, is that right? Exactly. I don't know if that's the right way to yeah, say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was kind of a, a, a bittersweet thing for us. Um, very sadly, they are um, or were a phenomenal organization. Yeah, that was unfortunately, very work. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, unfortunately, they um, they had to to shut their doors after a good run, something like seven or eight years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they helped a lot of students. Uh, Max being one of them. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And um, so they came in and, and um, um, through basically, you know, I think the economic downturn hit everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, are you doing a lot of what they were doing? You, your missions are very similar, is that, is that right? Exactly. It's a very similar model. I think there's, there's a few distinct differences. One is that um, um, they spend longer time overseas. Mm -hmm. Another is that we work with students that are more geared towards going to college. So, the economic model is slightly different. And then we also have adult programs that are going to be the sustainability model for the nonprofit. So we're going to start offering two week long programs for adults and that's going to basically fund the program in addition to existing FAFSA funds through college. We're going to talk more about that later. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, now Max, tell me a little bit about you. How did you, did you start it out with the Panchia Project and now you're part of the um, International Carpe Diem Foundation? Well, yeah, um, thanks to switching to Matt Scott, the alternative school, um, mm -hmm. I was offered the opportunity to travel to Ecuador in 2010, wow. which I took and was great, amazing experience. I um, bet it was. I got to travel to Ecuador um, that summer for exactly a month, studying social justice issues, grassroots leadership and lobbying, and um, we got to meet with all these different leaders and change makers all throughout the country, learning what it was like to be a leader and change maker and how we could make a difference in our own community as well as in Ecuador. Do you feel like it's made you more of a leader from having to have oh, that experience? Definitely. It gave me a amazing global perspective and whole new view on just how I live my life and I, I would I would be super grateful to have that again I bet. in a new place and new group of people so now that you've done that you were there for about a month what what kinds of things did you do there you, you said, um, I mean you said you met with you met with different people did you actually do any any work there that you oh, know that yeah. kind of thing what kinds of things did you do um, yeah we went all over the place um, did quite a few service learning projects. Um, in particular, one weekend we went to this indigenous village called Sariaku, in which we, one day, for example, we cut down trees and oh. carried the trees up a giant hill yeah, to, some work, huh? <laughs> to help someone build their house. Um, wow. Another day we went on like a seven hour trek through the rainforest to feed um, this animal called a tapir. They're like giant pig rat things. Um, <laughs> the village we were staying in, they have a really close connection with these animals and they have a little hut they built for it, so we went up there really? to feed it, um, yeah, which I've is seen cool. Pictures of those animals. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, things like that. Wow. Um, 
really get so involved. So what, what opportunities will Max have through Carpe Diem? Well, so the, the way that the program's designed is that the first semester they tap into existing college resources. So they'll attend school at, at either Portland Community College or um, Portland State University. And then in January, they start to rev up specifically towards what will be a three-month semester starting in February, where they get to choose which program they want to take for um, uh, to going overseas. And so through Carpe Diem, the for-profit side, they, they're able to um, choose and they get it you know, below cost, actually. And then they can choose to either go to Northern India, Southeast Asia, East Africa, um, South America, or Central America. And so those, they're, they're traveling programs and they're small groups. We have excellent staff who will take them overseas. And um, um, those types of insights, they're just mm. invaluable. Oh, yeah. What, what kinds of, what, what do you, what's the biggest change you see in kids when they come back from uh, an excursion like that? That's such a tough question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a good one, though, uh, because I think more often than not, things students see is, is they both tend to see how lucky they are to have simply born, mm. been born American. Um, quite often they'll have a greater appreciation and affinity to help their fellow man out. Um, and more than anything, I'd say, just the sense of self-reliance, self-awareness, mm. maturity. It's like it's different when you go out and, and during, over the course of the three months, they're slowly weaned into this sense of, of, of taking ownership for their own experience. And so by the time they're done, our goal is to have them feel confident to travel anywhere in the world mm. on their own. That's great. Would you agree with that, Max? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. I felt like a different person when I got back I from Ecuador. I bet you did. I bet you did. What, um, what are your plans now? What, what, what age are you? What grade are you? What are your plans? Uh, I'm going to get real personal here. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, I graduated from Mount Scott a half a year early in January. Um, I'm 18 now, um, and I'm going to go to PCC in the fall. Um, and then part of the Carpe Diem program requires that you go to PSU for a term, so in the winter, um, as long as I get into PSU, I'll be studying there, taking some prerequisites, and then in the spring, hopefully traveling to India for three months, um, wow. taking courses and having the experience of a lifetime. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. Does this in any way um, tie in with the Future Connect that we just interviewed right before this? Can, I mean, can they some help some of these uh, kids out and keep them keep them in school here? Absolutely. Beautifully enough, as we were in the entry space, um, Max knew the two Future Connect people walking in. Yeah. Um, so Future Connect, in many ways, it, it serves, um, you know, just like any, any nonprofit, um, it, it's far better to build partnerships than it is to go out on, on your own. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Same with anything, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so um, ICDF has done a good job of building a partnership um, through our new executive director, Hansel, and she's worked uh, greatly with um, PCC, with Future Connect, and a variety of other organizations oh. in town to I serve like as that. feeder organizations. It, does, it, is, it makes a huge difference when people all work together, doesn't it? <laughs> I, know, I wish we could see it in other places. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Um, now, you... The, the nonprofit side of it has to obviously be supported somehow. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you said part of it is from the for profit side, is that right? You also have fundraisers and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you have something coming up, right? We sure do. Why don't you tell me about uh, that? We're very excited about it. It's sort of an, um, it's the first time the Pangea base will meet the ICDF base. So it's oh. like, it's like, it's sort of like a marriage of sorts, yeah. two families to coming yeah. together. Um, but we're going to be doing it on October 25th at Mercy Corps. And, um, Downtown. Exactly. Yes. One of our partners, nice one of the there. other partners. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes, yes. I saw that on your website. They're a very active partner, it seems like. So what, what can people expect at this fundraiser? Um, well, one of the cool things is, is while the, the for-profit has these students that go out every year and every semester, the nonprofit students will, of course, go out just in the spring. Um, they're tasked with bringing back these incredibly authentic and unique artifacts from overseas. Cool. And so those go up for auction, as well as we tap into a variety of partnerships that we've built over the course of years with overseas organizations. So this year we have a, a five-day safari to um, Africa. Wow. We have a, um, a, a Siena in, in Italy, a, a, an apartment in Siena, Italy That's for a week. That's in the Tuscany region, isn't exactly, it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So nice. <laughs> We've got some great wow. things that people should come out for, for sure. That sounds great. Um, is there like 
you know, nibbles hors d'oeuvres and something to drink and while you're walking around checking out all the auction items, that kind of thing. Oh, of course. Of what, course. what good fundraiser would yeah, it be yeah. without I, some, I some beer and some so wine? Yeah. I was going to have to you know, <laughs> reprimand you if you didn't have that. Good. Okay. So that is October 25th. And if people are interested, tickets can be uh, purchased maybe on the website or they can go there for the information. Please. www.carpefoundation.org. Okay. Yeah. So what are, what are the big plans for Carpe Diem? Obviously, you've had this merging uh, with Pangea Project, and um, you, are you have plans to expand more? You've, you've gone from two kids a year to how many now? Well, the current cohort stands at eight students, and yeah. this being the first year that we're running the full year, we, of course, want to get it right. Yeah. So we're going to, exactly, yeah. we're going to start small and then build up, and, and our goal is to run two cohorts a year of preferably around 12 to 15 students per cohort. Um, so we're slowly like ramping cohort, it up. Per cohort, meaning. So, so for instance, you know. Is that um, per, like per trip. Exactly. That, that so, so okay. what they'll choose, the, they'll all go together in, in connection through 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 classes. You know, um, meet weekly or monthly rather, and then go on to their overseas programs, staying connected because a cohort model tends to work so that when one person you know maybe needs a little bit of help. Right. Right. So they've already had some kind of bonding there exactly. beforehand. That's exactly. Exactly. Okay, so um, what was the other question I just had for you that just escaped my mind here? Um, okay, so you're going to have the, um, the kids going out in, in these programs. Are they going to, what do they do when they come back? Do you stay in touch with the kids afterwards? What, what happens then? Well, that's a great question, and honestly, one of the biggest reasons why we switched our model. Because okay. students would come back, um, you totally intuited that. <laughs> students would come back, and they would um, um, inevitably founder. I mean, there's a natural, there's this natural understanding that, and I'm sure you experienced this, when you come back, reverse culture shock is ten times harder than culture yeah, shock initially. Yeah. And so, um, um, in the absence of a strong support community, we found that our students were taking about two to three times longer to reintegrate their experiences mm -hmm. to their home life. And so we figured, what better thing to do than to both do it as a cohort so that they have that support, mm -hmm. and then secondarily to, to partner them with local organizations that can serve as an outlet for that, which is a great reason why Mercy Corps is around. Uh, yes, yeah, so they can do volunteer work there and exactly. that kind of thing? Exactly, yeah. They're yeah. going to be doing some internship work at, at Mercy Corps oh, afterwards and then putting together a final proposal experience, uh, uh, incorporating the theory from the fall, uh -huh. semesters at school, the experience from the, the semester overseas, the incubator of Mercy Corps, and they're going to offer a program project for um, to benefit the Portland community. Sounds like you're building some good leaders. That's leaders a hope. For the That's future. a hope, yeah. 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 Would you recommend this program, Max? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You'd, and what would you tell somebody if they said, you know, I'm scared, I, I'm afraid to go overseas, and what would you tell them? <laughs> I'd tell them to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. It's worth it, huh? Yeah. Tell me, before we before we run out of time here, Ethan, what, what does um, Carpe Diem need? What kind of, do you need volunteers? Do you need Donations, what do you need? Great question. Um, probably the, the, there's three things that I'd say we need. Um, volunteers for sure. What, what good nonprofit could run without a good set <laughs> yeah, of, of volunteers? Yeah. Um, um, donations, absolutely. In our, in our sort of freshman year with this new program, obviously expenses are higher. And as we're developing these adult programs, which is my third thing, adults to do the programs, oh, hint, hint, yeah. wink, wink, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, to, to have um, some funding stream as we to allow us the time to really develop these programs. Our goal is to be completely self-sufficient from any grant money within the next three years. And I think it's absolutely doable, yeah. but it's yeah. going to take some time. Good, good. Well, I think you're doing a terrific job. And Max, Maxwell, thank you so much for sharing your um, insight and your experience with Carpe Diem. Of course. And yeah. thank you very much, Ethan. I appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting, volunteering, being part of the International Carpe Diem Foundation, the website should be up on your screen. Contact them if you want to support them even more. Go to their, uh, their fundraiser. It's going to be October 25th at Mercy Corps in Portland. And um, it sounds like uh, you've got a, a great, great program, and it's going great guns. So, thanks for watching this section of Community Hotline. Don't go away. We'll be right back in just a few minutes.